Good day, everyone. Um, before we um, call the meeting to order, we'll just do a roll call of who is in attendance. Myself, Lisa Vezo Allen, board chair. We have our chief, Stevenson. We have vice chair, John Bruno. We have Ian McKenzie, board member. Virtually, we have um, Matt Shoemaker, board member, and Rick Reb, board member. We also have Sarah Miles, our board secretary. We have Lincoln Ludit, our communications person for police services. We also have Tina Caruso, who's our human resource supervisor at police services and staff sergeant Vicky Monto. And from the media, I see James Hopkin, Brian Kelly, and we have um, another community member that's coming up as an L Cohen. So welcome. I first would like to start with our to territorial acknowledgement. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Robinson Huron Treaty territory and the land on which we are gathered is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, specifically the Garden River and Batchewana First Nations, as well as the Métis people in this area is known as Bawa Ting. So welcome everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We are 108 p.m. Do we have any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none, any questions arising out of the minutes not otherwise on the agenda, Ian? Yes, your last agenda, uh, due to illness, I wasn't here, but the subject uh, that's very close to my heart was brought up and that was with regards to the, the board ledger fund and how it should be spent. A number of years ago when I was on the police uh, services board, uh, at that time, I had uh, uh, strongly recommended that money should be used for, for the police services and, uh, and any affiliates like Crime Stoppers or maybe uh, uh, bursaries for college and university. But other than that, not to be spent on anything as it's public money. It's not ours to spend on various charities. And God knows there's hundreds of very worthy charities that would like uh, to be tapping into that. So I'm, uh, I guess, on the same side of the, the ledger as uh, Councillor. Um, well, why don't Matthew. you, Ian, why don't we put that on other business? We'll put that under other business and... and... It's just that you discussed that in the last meeting. So I'm just yeah. saying, I, I'm, I'm along with, with Matt. Uh, well, there, there, there was no um, decision made. So why don't we, do you want to put that on other business? Matt, would you like to put that under under, under other business to discuss? Well, I think we, I, I certainly discussed what I thought of it at the last meeting. I think, I think Ian, if he's just referencing what uh, happened at the last meeting, probably is proper to have it under the questions arising out of the minutes uh, if he otherwise doesn't want to put a motion forward or anything of that nature. That's correct. Well, why don't we, um, what I'm suggesting is we will um, distribute the policy that was established and we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting so that everyone can review the policy first. Are we in agreement with that? Sure. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Matt. I um, had one, I, I can't tell if... Uh, if anybody else's hand is up, but we got the memo the other day from the Solicitor General about uh, advising the police service if we're going to be candidates in the municipal election. And, and I just, I've, I've declared my intention previously to uh, seek the mayor's office this fall. So I just wanted to let the uh, police service board know that. I'm sure the folks there have read it in the news, but I just wanted to put it in the minutes that I've uh, advised them as, of such. Yes, we have, Matt. Thank you. And even though I haven't even started my nomination process yet, I, I do intend to run for Ward 2 again. So thanks. All right, adoption of minutes for March 31st. I need a mover and a seconder. John? I'll move it, I'll move it Lisa, or second it. Okay, Rick, I'll have you second. Sorry, um, Matt and Rick, since you're um, not on uh, video, if you can just give a holler or a hand up, um, whatever works for you, okay? So moved by John, seconded by Rick. Resolve that the, um, sorry, resolve that the minutes of the regular meeting as presented be hereby approved. All in favor? 
I'm in, I'm in favor. Thank you. Motion to accept the agenda April 28th, 2022. I need a mover. John, seconder, Ian. Resolve that the agenda of the regular meeting as presented be hereby approved. All in favor? Wonderful. I'm in favor, yeah. Very much looking forward to this presentation. We have Staff Sergeant Vicki Monto doing our presentation about diversity inclusion approach in recruitment. So take it away and thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much everyone for uh, listening to our presentation. I have my partner, Tina Caruso. She's the supervisor in charge of human resources today. So we're gonna just bounce some ideas back and forth for you all. Obviously, if you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, what we did in this presentation is we looked at what we've done, where we're at and where we are moving forward. So we're just gonna start in. Mm -hmm. What we've done, career fairs. In the past, we've done post-secondary education through the high school liaison officers. We've used Constable Kirkpatrick and Constable Cajamelio to do outreach for us. We've also done Blue Lion Expo. I'll let you yes, speak. So that. Blue Lion Expo, this was pre-COVID. Uh, we attended in Toronto um, and we did a job fair there for all first responders. So that was a great experience in getting us on the map. Um, mm -hmm. trying to recruit, get some officers, civilian members back to Sault Ste. Marie, and also any new members that want to move to Sault Ste. Marie. So that was, uh, that went well. Looking forward to doing that in the, after post-COVID, which I think is a great opportunity for our service. Uh, we have also, uh, on the civilian side, have been working with Sioux College and Algoma University and attending their career fairs too, on an ongoing basis. And we've been doing that for a number of years. We've, um, we've also done presentations to the Police Foundation program. We did that last year. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure we were appealing to the entire school. So this year we ensured that we went to the career fair for the entire whole of Sioux College because we recognized that we want to target uh, a very wide audience. We want to look at nursing students. We want to look at STEM. Uh, we really want to reach out. And we know that Sioux College, uh, with their international students, uh, they did just win an award and we certainly want to appeal to that as well. Algoma University, we've done that as well. We were a month long with their career fair as well. Um, we did it, I just recently did a presentation to NOLA, our Northern Ontario Latin Hispanic Association. I was really happy with the results of that. Um, one of the special parts is they had their St. Mary's uh, English as a second language class. They actually had 30 people oh, in okay. attendance for that. Um, we also uh, got to reach out to people who are from Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and Mexico. So as part of that as well, they re we recognize that uh, sometimes one of the challenges is uh, permanent residency. So we know that in order to um, move forward in a policing career, uh, volunteering opportunities are really gonna help. So I've been in touch with Sergeant Siri as well as Inspector Bolduck, and we're looking forward to moving forward with our auxiliary program and uh, get, getting people in the door. That's what we wanna do. Um, We've also, and they've also been in contact with me um, about policing. So I know it was a success. They said, I'm really interested. They're interested in policing and they want to volunteer. So um, social media, obviously we've had to, I've had to really update and understand what uh, young people today uh, and Lincoln's really helped me with that. Um, so we've updated our website. Um, I've done a, a video. Uh, we have Sergeant Nikki Magnin who did a video on policing. What we really wanted to do is accurately reflect what policing is, just not what it's misconstrued in the media, the old, uh, old things that we used to see. Um, so we have Nikki, we have uh, Bo Nebu, who is, he works with our MCCRT uh, program, and he is showing our partnerships with our community partners, working with the Sioux Area Hospital, he is also going to be featured. We have uh, Constable Houselander, who's one of our young female um, officers. And we also have Co Constable Cachamelio, who's also done an extensive amount of community involvement. Um, it sounds like it's very female forward, which it is because it's part of what we're doing is we are trying to es establish some parity and we're trying to obviously recruit females into this career and also our partners from our multicultural communities. Um, we've done Q&A videos, hashtags, 
Um, Tina can talk about an interview as well that she's yeah. done. Um, so on the social media side, on the civilian side, we've actually done a, a big blast with the website, updated it, more modernized. Uh, videos as well. We're actually interviewing a lot of different civilian members in our building. And it's something that we're working with Lincoln moving forward and updating the website, changing it up. Um, so that's kind of in the works. Also, we have had our HR assistant interview be interviewed with social, um, sorry, local media. And the interview is still on YouTube. So we've actually used that interview in our career fairs as well. So that's something moving forward that we've actually had partnerships with the local media and doing, doing that as well. Um, we also got involved in websites, um, City of Sault Ste. Marie, as well as Welcome to Sault Ste. Marie, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of our young applicants certainly use social media, and that was a good way to reach them as well. <clears throat> um, mock interviews. Mock interviews, yeah, that was something that we just um, started doing. We did our first mock interview, so we're kind of partnered up with the Office Administration Program at Sioux College. And we are helping some of their students um, doing mock interviews with them. So we're sitting with them, doing an interview and providing some feedback. And that was something that we started this uh, January, February. Have you gone into the high schools at all with any of them? I mean, I know it's been difficult, um, but yes, I can see them really loving the mock interviews. Yes, so we are actually uh, police week. We are looking into starting to go into the schools mm -hmm. and starting to work with um, classes and, and there and doing presentations. Yeah, wonderful. Um, so that covers what we have done. Um, let's look at where we are at. So we've done a lot of outreach to our local partner agencies, um, Acano, Pride. Um, Acano, we've done a lot of outreach. We've done a lot of training um, with Acano recently. We've also done shift training in the past as well. We do obviously have a great relationship with our Indigenous partners yeah, here, just ask and we that. have for many, many years, yeah. um, not only in our policing community with uh, Chief Lesage, but we've also got it with the Indian Friendship Centre. We work very closely together, um, as well as non non So we've, we've always worked really well with our partners, and we will continue to do that. Um, so we will have some targeted outreach, uh, whether it's a meet and greet or whether it's uh, going for coffee or whether we're going to let our agencies decide what and our partners decide how they want to go with that. And that's exactly how we'll do it. Whether it's attending celebrations, I think that's another, I, I certainly like diversity and I certainly like cultural events and food. Uh, so I think that's a great way to meet people. Um, we do have a calendar of events throughout the year, uh, police week, uh, as well as orientation week. Uh, May 7th, we have emergency preparedness event. So that's going to be with some of our emergency partners as well. And uh, Tina and I will obviously be there as well. Uh, the chief and the deputy will probably be at all of our events also. So I think that's really positive. Um, we like food too. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Well, we like, you know what, we're, we're very uh, positive about our police service and we really want to promote yeah. that throughout the community. Um, I contacted a number of police services. I really looked at what I thought, who practiced the best practices. I really liked what Niagara and New York and Peel and Halton, as well as Anishinaabek, I really liked how they were doing things. And I tried to adopt the things that they're doing into what we as an organization are gonna do. Um, Niagara really did a lot of workshops targeting specific groups. Um, there's a female women uh, symposiums and policing where people get a chance to come in. Now that we're post COVID, that's the direction we're going to take. They can come in and they can see real life yeah. of what we actually do. We do problem solving, we do communication, what, you know, not what you're seeing on TV and certainly not how we're sometimes negatively portrayed. Um, York and Peel, uh, initiative back as well. Uh, um, Mark Lesage, as well as um, Chantal um, LaRock from Sudbury. They've done a really, a lot of really good media and realistic and they've really done it on a shoestring budget. She's done a lot of her videos. If you haven't seen them yet, you really should. Uh, they're fantastic. She did it for Orange Shirt Day. She did the Canadian National Anthem as well. Um, if you haven't seen it, you really ought to. And I really like that she did this. Uh, and Lincoln and I tried to adopt it as well. Yeah, you can do things on a cell phone. You can do things on a very yeah. limited budget. And that yeah. is exactly what we are doing. Yeah. And Tina did it with her uh, dispatchers as well. So it's very realistic. Um, one of the things that was really successful for us and I will continue to do, we really canvassed our own members <clears throat> because I think our people are our best recruiters. 
And once they realize how open you are to that, um, they've really brought us some positive people and I'll continue to do appeals with that. Um, our, our new videos that you're gonna see that are gonna go along with our website. Um, we continuously up, update our website and our application package. Uh, one of the things we have just done is we've included a survey. Uh, the survey is completely voluntary and it's in order to collect data so we can really capture what our key demographics are. And we can see where people, because we want to really diversify. We don't want to just diversify in culture and having a lot of uh, gender parity, but we also really want to make sure we diversify in thought. We want to make sure we have people from all different backgrounds. Um, <clears throat> so we're continue, we are going to be collecting that information because that way if we have the data, that's certainly the direction of the, that we can go in our um, advertising and in our recruiting. Um, presentations, as we have said, yes, they are coming to local high schools. Um, Tina and I are both members of the Constable Selection System with Ontario with Chief of Police. The reason I think that's so valuable is we get to see what they're doing in the rest of the province, and we get to see what the best practices are. Uh, we also learn from the large services. They have a lot more funding available to them, and we get to see, and they're, and they're the first to say these are the mistakes that we've made, learn from our mistakes, and they're very good at sharing their information. So we learned about some of that, and we're going to continue on with that. Um, moving forward, mentorship programs. Um, what we've started, obviously the auxiliary program is going to be a great way of bringing a lot of multicultural groups in. Um, also one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, one of our recent hires, Arett Robinson, he's actively mentoring another student from Algoma University um, so that they can understand uh, what the requirements are to enter into policing. Removing barriers. Um, one of the things that I identified is um, our fitness testing, especially for some of our uh, female candidates, was very challenging. The old system used to have people would apply. If they weren't successful, they'd have to wait for a year before they could reapply. I didn't think that was very realistic. So we put it back to three months, and that wasn't something I can say I came up with myself. It was when I looked at how Peel had done it and how York had done it to accurately re reflect it. Uh, we want it to be... A benchmark, we don't want it to be a screen out tool. It's a chance to get people into the door and then we can work with people and we can explain to them, this is how you can succeed. Um, it is a, um, it is work related and it is necessary. So we do have to reach a level seven on the shuttle, it's job relatedness. Um, So that's something we've done to remove barriers. The CSS program as well, by going electronic, they remove barriers because candidates who are, say, in the far north who normally would have challenges in the old processes to apply, this is online and they can apply. If it's a challenge financially and they're marginalized individuals, they can certainly appeal to OACP and their amount, which is $250, would be covered. So we're not eliminating people. Um, ongoing presentations with community partners. Um, Sioux College, Algoma University. We haven't touched with Lake Superior State University yet, but we certainly will. Uh, we have outreach. I have spoken with Pride as well, and uh, there will be programs coming forward in the future. Um, we will be going to Algoma, Algoma. We will go into other universities and colleges as well uh, with information for them. Like I said, whether it's a whether it's a presentation, whether it's a meet and greet, we're certainly open to new ideas. Um, one of the other things that we're doing that I really liked, a lot of the female applicants that we had that have been really successful officers throughout the years have been very competitive athletes. So we were looking at, originally I was looking at female hockey, um, and I spoke with uh, Shannon Bolduck, who's uh, one of our recruiters. She's also a coach at uh, Sioux College Hockey Program. Um, and uh, Mark Dubas is daughter. Mark Dubas is an officer who's been with us for a hundred years. So Mark is uh, yes. going to. <laughs> Mark's daughter was actually uh, coaching with rep hockey. So what we are going, what has been in the works is there was an invitation sent out to all the female uh, hockey players, and we are going to have a meet and greet. Um, that wasn't enough, so we decided we were going to extend it to all of Sioux College's varsity athletes. So we've that's been the. Offer has been extended to soccer as well as curling and any varsity athlete. That's great. Um, sorry. To sorry. Interrupt. Also to um, to have the meet and greets, but also do an information booth. So when there's 
major um, events happening in the sporting world, especially with university and college schedules, setting up booths, being there, being mm -hmm. visible. Somebody wants to come up and ask questions, we're there. Um, the other thing too is maybe looking, we are even looking at potential Greyhound games, right? Having a booth there, officers there, going looking at the Jumbotron to, to mm -hmm. even advertise it. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. That's Great something idea. too that we're looking, uh, we're looking yeah. into too. <clears throat> Um, we will schedule virtual employment information sessions. However, I'm, I'm really very hopeful. Uh, we can certainly use that with our out of town people, but I think personal meetings are super valuable. So I really want to go ahead with that. And I really want yeah. not just us from recruiting, but officers as a whole uh, back out in the community. So they're very approachable because any officer is going to tell you about the, uh, about this career. So I really want to see that a lot more. I know that that's something, certainly the chief, the direction from the chief as well. I think in terms of events too, um, the downtown association already has their calendar out. Um, so poutine feast would be um, probably a really good one. And they have their downtown street parties already. Everything's all scheduled. Okay. Um, so if you, I can even. Yeah, I just, you know what, if you forward that, I would really yeah. appreciate it. I did look at it the other day. Um, and I like the fact that it was planned already a year in yeah. advance. So yeah, we will we'll absolutely yeah, jump I'll, on board. I'll that. I'll the calendar. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know sure. Tina has been participating. For what? Um, uh, the, the last, the last, the last yeah. one. So this one is fairly new, just in the last couple of weeks. I'm on a, on the HR committee with the Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police. So they have an HR representative from each of the police services in Ontario. Uh, we have been working together. I've been working with them for about three years. They now are feeling the same pain as us for recruitment and retention. So they've actually created a new recruitment and retention working group that I'm a part of. So that's just something that has been started and it's in, uh, in planning mode. So I think that'll bring a lot of great ideas moving forward. Yeah, too. that's great. Yeah. Um, there's just another, there's a couple ideas. Okay. Okay. Um, there's just a couple ideas I, I really wanted to get out to everyone. Um, and I want you to understand that diversity is a fact and inclusion is a behavior. And our community is changing and that is a reality. Okay. And obviously as policing, we want to reflect the community that we're serving. Um, some of the recent hires that we've had just to reflect how we have diversity in thought. Um, we have individuals with psych and social degrees an airline pilot, an aircraft engineer, a human resources specialist, an IT data specialist. So we have a lot of diversity and thought coming forward and I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen over the next several years. Um, we understood from the, prior to the council selection system, I was on the OACP working group. So we really identified the old system was very antiquated. It had to be revamped and we did revamp it. The essential competencies are much different now and I think that it's important for us to look forward in modernizing. Um, the survey, what the survey does for us as well, um, stats gives us decision-making authority and our communities are changing. Um, some of the skills that I really think benefit our organization by really diversifying, you get language, cultural knowledge, relatability, innovation and new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. And I know that's something that our chief really stresses with us. Um, and I think consistency is the hallmark to all fairness. So what we've done, community focused recruiting, we've done outreach employment information sessions. We've done targeted recruitment through employment and information sessions. We've done outreaches to the colleges and university programs so that our presence is there at the career fairs and the job fairs. We've done classroom presentations and that allows direct interact, interaction. We've done outreach to Sioux College in Algoma, not only to the police foundation, but it's gonna to be to the other programs as well. Uh, the social media platforms, question and answers, video, City of Sioux St. Marie. We've really done a blast of how, what a great community this is to live in. Um, internal supports, organization-wide. So all of our officers act as recruiting ambassadors. Um, what I like, I, I don't want to get into too much about what our process is about, but we use value-based interviewing. And the reason we use value-based interviewing is user-friendly, you get better engagement, and the interviewers are able to pivot and adjust 
so that the multicultural populations are not disproportionately disadvantaged due to a poor interview performance. Um, so moving forward, plans in place, we will be doing enhanced women's symposiums. We're gonna require a wide range of female officers from various cultural backgrounds in attendance. And they're gonna have the opportunity to do guidance and mentoring with the attendees. And we're gonna do some relationship building. Um, and again, we had talked about the shuttle run. Uh, the word I was struggling with, it's a bona fide occupational requirement. So that's what you have to, it's a job requirement. It's about meeting the demands of policing. Um, and that's why we're aiming for a level seven. And uh, we did recognize throughout the province that services must prioritize the physical readiness and screening. So, good. That's awesome. I would, I would love, um, for you to share this with the social equity committee. So there's quite a few community organizations, uh, part of that committee, I'm on that committee. Okay. Um, Inspector Bolduc usually attends. Okay. Um, and I think that would be really wonderful. Um, you probably get some good feedback as well. So okay. I'll sure. talk to uh, Maggie McGoldrick is, uh, she works under um, the DSAB and she's the mm -hmm. social equity coordinator. Um, and I think that would be a, a good spot for you to, uh, to share this information as well. Sure, okay. we'd love to. Oh, sorry, Rick. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. Uh, no, first of all, uh, uh, thanks for the presentation, uh, Vicki and Tina. Uh, well done. Uh, it was really good to hear all the things that we're doing. It's great for the public to hear all the things you're doing. Uh, my only question, and you might not have an answer uh, for this question uh, today, which is fine. I, in fact, maybe think about it might require some thought, which is uh, what, what can the board uh, do for... Uh, you folks to uh, help support you in these efforts. Um, maybe give that some thought and um, uh, give us some feedback on that to see if there's ways that we could support you uh, in this uh, in this endeavor. So thanks, thanks again. I, lo I love that idea, yeah, and I would like great. to give it some thought. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah. John or Ian, do you have any comments or questions? I just think it was an excellent presentation, and I was listening very intently, and uh, you seem to have covered a very, very vast area uh, in, your, in your research and, and the information that you're gathering. And I believe you're on the right track to keep it up. And I'm sure the chief and deputy are proud of what you're accomplishing. Good report. Thank you. Um, great job with everything that you've outlined there. I just have one question. Mm -hmm. um, and, and from the time that you recruit mm -hmm. to the time that they become go to the police college, mm -hmm. what mentorship program is established for those people whose name you took that? Okay, so it depends on where they're at in the process. If there's some part that they're struggling with, obviously we're gonna mentor them through and give them the opportunity to provide them their best self. So they may be, um, like to go through a process typically is about three months from start to okay. finish of hire. But that being said, if there's some challenges with the fitness portion or if there's some, maybe they need some more community involvement, you might be looking at maybe their six months or, you know, if they're not, if they're not suitable at that time, they may want to revisit us again in a year. And, and I did like the part about the realistic part of policing. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of people see what they see on television. Mm -hmm. And I think the more reality that we can give the mm -hmm. recruits and, and give them the, you know, what, what does the job really entail? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's very important then to, yeah. for, their, for their social uh, and character building process. Yeah. Mr. I, Bruno, I'll just add real quickly to that. And that is that the auxiliary program that Vicki and Tina mentioned is absolutely crucial uh, for transparency mm -hmm. and not just for recruits to come and see, possible recruits to come and see what the police really do, but members of the public who aren't recruits and don't intend to be recruits can also be auxiliaries. And that the, the best part about that is transparency, because in, in being in a public meeting here today, I can say from over 40 years, some odd years of policing that what you see on TV and what's really done in policing are absolutely different and not the same. Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was a lot of, and Mr. McKenzie, thank you. And a lot of what I uh, based our direction on um, one was a gender policing inclusion opportunities for change. It's a study done through Wilfrid Laurier University. 
and what they had actually, the one I like is from 2000, my research is from 2019. I think a lot of it, is, that's the most recent I can get. Um, they had taken people from uh, international uh, academic scholars uh, from across the world and they come up with these. And it applies to not only uh, our female candidates, but also our multicultural candidates as well. For sure. um, also the National Institute of Justice, uh, Women of Policy Breaking Barriers and Blazing a Path. And they have a lot of, one of the recommendations is you really have to have a realistic uh, portrayal of what policing is. Just as a Thank final uh, oversight to it, I'm, I'm really proud of what uh, both employees have done here in terms of reaching outside of the box. Part of the initiative of this was to like you, you guys, when Rick mentioned, you know, how could we help? Well, one of the things we talked about in our discussion is you all come from a variety of different backgrounds and lifestyle and your ideas about how we can be even more creative is sort of the other point of this presentation yeah. actually and and you know honestly i, I said to both uh, uh tina and vicky i said you know we have to start to think outside of the box and and i remember vicky came to me and said well what about if we went to organize female hockey games i said that's amazing why didn't we think of that yeah. before remember but uh, it's stuff like that where we don't, it's not like the past hasn't put us there, but why don't we place ourselves there so we reach that different population? So no, that's right. what they're doing. And, and I'm really proud of what you did today. And Bob and I are both proud and, and we want to continue forward on this and, and have that community input and say, where could we be next? Right. Well, the ability to share best practices with other services is I think really key. Um, and it's wonderful that, that you're able to do that for sure. Matt, did you have any uh, comments or questions? No, that was an excellent presentation. I agree. Thank you for, uh, for all of that. And I think they've all been captured by yourself, John and, uh, and Ian. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, and seriously, like anything we can do from a board perspective. Um, certainly happy to. We're, we're welcome to new ideas. Yeah. We, we yeah. truly are. We're welcome to new yeah. ideas and we're welcome to Thank you so much. Now we're at communications and reports. Chief Stevenson, you can take it away. Thank you. I was glad to see you. You mentioned soccer. I'll take you to uh, the special account. Uh, ledger which is the the board account ledger and you can see there was three uh, debits there on the 28th of february for 500 each or 1500 and uh another one for the association legal costs related to the investigation and there's one uh, 31st of march there you'll see there's a canceled check that we'll look into and see why it was stale data that didn't get cash so that's about the update to that. Yeah. So we'll take you then to uh, our monthly overtime costs. And uh, so we went from, you know, in February we had 88, we're up to 91. Uh, this time last year we were 68 and we're 91. That's a fairly significant year to date increase uh, for the month, I mean. And most of that, 26,000 of that, all went into the bridge protest. So uh, Deputy McLaughlin and his team, as well as more or less a joint force operation that managed uh, our bridge during that difficult time in Ottawa. We ensured that we had resources uh, to ensure that the stuff that happened in Ottawa didn't happen here. And good intelligence and good relationship building and between and with uh, different agencies uh, certainly cost us some money. The other piece that explains the overtime is uh, COVID backfill. So we, like any other organization, uh, at different times would have COVID, they have to be off for five days as per provincial rules. So backfill had to come in to serve those things. So a couple couple things that came together there. The next slide will simply more or less show that again. In February, we had 5,000 in overtime in terms of staff shortage. In March, we went to 15. And uh, a lot of that has to do with backfilling um, for both overtime that I discussed at the bridge, as well as um, health related issues in the organization. And the next one shows the same thing, went from 5,000 
in patrol to 13,000 in March, as well as 252 to 1,500 in serve. So um, hopefully that trend doesn't continue and you'll see in the financial update a little later from Angela, uh, hopefully we can mitigate that over the year as, as time progresses. We go to um, our board report on um, um, complaints. We only had one in March, uh, one new complaint. Uh, mail in regards to conduct and behavior of our members. This investigation is ongoing. When we look at year to date, so last year this time we were 12, this year we're 11. So we're down by one, which is always good news. If we go to use of force, uh, reports. You'll see uh, February was a particularly busy month. We had 13 incidents in February, down to five in March. In terms of reports, same thing, 23 to eight. Um, firearms drawn in February was seven, uh, none in March. CEW or conducted energy weapon, you can see went from 10 to three. So uh, February was a busy month and March wasn't even a quarter of that. And you can see from the material on the next two pages, majority of those were very serious uh, firearm calls. Uh, I think six or seven of them, if there's a total of five, uh, at least three or four of those were firearm related where the officers had to utilize their use of force options. If we look at the total uh, January to February, we're 34 this year. Uh, this time last year, we were 51. So we're still uh, 18 less than last year, year to date. Go to our uh, travel report. You can see uh, um, myself there uh, meeting with our, uh, our force psychologist, Lori Gray, as well as a new command trailer in one trip. Um, the inspectors were also part of another trip looking at that uh, fairly significant purchase. Uh, optic board meeting, which is reimbursed on my behalf, uh, as well as the OACP conference. Well, that's uh, my reports. Now, I guess I should mention the fact that we do not have uh, statistics for this month. And, and the straightforward reason is we had a shortage in our civilian complement simply due to uh, backfill of both uh, COVID and additional staffing requirements. So we didn't have it this month, but we will have it for next month. Thanks very much, Chief. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Rick, Matt? Uh, nothing for me. All good. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Ian or John? No. No, I'm fine. I'm good okay. too. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chief. Thank you. Okay. And then who's doing number 10? Uh, I can just yeah. If you like. Yeah. Oh, um, yes. So number 10, uh, board members building tour. Sarah's going to speak to that. So at our last meeting, uh, the board members had requested um, arranging a building tour. So I have a couple dates to provide if you want to mull those over. Um, we thought it might be nice to coordinate during police week. Yeah. Um, since we have a lot going on. Um, and if we could coordinate it with a finance committee meeting as well, because I know that you guys had wanted to have that, that would be um, doubly good. So I have May 16th at 9, 2, 3, or 4 o'clock. And I think we'll probably schedule about an hour. Okay. Or May 17th at 9, 3, or 4 o'clock. Okay. And if neither of those dates work, we can go back to the drawing board and, and find some more. But um, if you want to take until the end of the meeting to check your schedules or email me um, over the next couple of days, we'll get that sorted out. Why don't you, um, just because we have some remote um, board members, why don't you send us an email, yes. Sarah, and then we okay. can, uh, and maybe even a doodle poll okay. um, would probably, rather than having getting a bunch of emails back, okay. just do a doodle poll. Thanks so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Sarah, when is it usually the, the shift change here? Is it a shift change at three o'clock or five o'clock? Um, it, it's usually an evening thing. Um, most of the changeover happens around six thirty. I'd say. Right? Six seven. I'm just looking at the times you've got there. Maybe three o'clock in the afternoon is. It's only a suggestion. Well, well, we've got the times, and then we'll see where everyone is available. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Okay, and then um, new business. So we moved the um, ledger fund. We'll put that on the actual agenda um, for the next meeting in May. Uh, seeing no other new business. Um, our next meeting date is May the 26th. I am not here. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You I'm at the uh, Ontario uh, Police Services the Board's um, conference. So um, I will try to zoom in. I'll see what the schedule is. Um, and if not, I will have my vice chair, my trusty partner <laughs> um, chair. So I'll, I'll just put a maybe for me. Um, <coughs> see what your agenda yeah I think there's an agenda for the conference right now we might have forwarded it to you. uh there it's kind of wasn't specific times okay. yet so um because i did contact the coordinator so yeah i, I i'll be a maybe yeah Whatever. okay what? all right and uh i need a mover and a seconder to adjourn from the regular meeting I have John and, and Ian. All in favor? Rick, I think we lost Matt. No. Is he there? He texted me. He's out. Okay. 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 Rick? Yep, good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for um, attending and thank you to the media and uh, and we really appreciated the presentation.